BYU Sports Nation breaking news. This morning, BYU head coach Kalani Satake announced Ty Detmer has been relieved of his role as the team's offensive coordinator. Detmer served as the offensive coordinator the past two seasons. Detmer and all coaches remain under contract on the staff. BYU will immediately begin a search for a new offensive coordinator. The new offensive coordinator will make decisions regarding the offensive staff. We bring in not only Brian Logan, but David Nixon with us. Uh, what's your reaction, Brian, to the news that Ty Detmer has been relieved as the OC? Um, it's not too shocking, man. I think I think something had to happen. Something had to happen. And, uh, you know, when you have a very poor, uh, you know, offensive season and showing like you did, I mean, you look at these stats, you know, uh, 118th in total offense, um, you know, rushing offense, 104. I mean – I don't like seeing 100 plus on those. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all, man. And so – to me, I mean, it just it makes sense. It, I would be shocked if it if something like this didn't happen. I, I'm shocked that Ty Demmer got the axe. To be honest, I, I would have thought it'd been some assistant coaches um, that they maybe give Ty one more year. Keep in mind that he was changing from this spread offense, go fast, go hard, to a pro style, and that takes time. I mean, you've got to go out there, and you've got to recruit, you got to get new talent in, and that's what they've been trying to do these last few years is is get to his type of system. I thought maybe he'd have one more year, but. I tell you what, it was it was abysmal. It, it, it was it was a terrible year. Brian just mentioned some of the stats, and and ultimately, you know, you saw Kalani's frustrations throughout the year. I mean, I remember in particular after the U or during the Utah State game at halftime, going into halftime, they said, "Hey, you, how do you feel about your shot? You know, your chances here in the second half." He goes, "As long as the offense doesn't screw it up." All oh, right, right. You know, and 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 there were a couple comments throughout the season where you saw Kalani's pure frustrations. Defense held their own. Yeah, they struggled some games here and there. Um, but the offense did not hold their, in, their end of the bargain. And, I, I, and ultimately, I, that costs Ty Demmer's job. I think it's different if maybe they were maybe middle of the pack as far as their rankings. And, yeah. uh, mediocre you know, would have been tolerated. Mediocre. Yeah, that, I think that goes to your point, right, which is, hey, I'm still developing these players, still trying to get my own guys you know, for this system. But, like, when you are last in every category, in almost every category. You're bottom like, 10. Bottom, bottom 10. 20, yeah. that, that's a whole nother level, man. That's That's – that's not just uh, okay. I have players that I don't have, or we had injuries. I t to me, I think that's just a sign of not good. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. BYU stunk on offense. This was epically bad from a school that is known for its offense and quarterback. You, this was a bad year. Was it all Ty Detmer's fault? Absolutely not. There were an unbelievable amount of injuries. There was also ineptitude. The schedule was tough. But listen. You control what you can control, and the message is clear. Those kind of numbers will not be tolerated. So, so, so out goes Ty Detmer. So here's the thing. When you, when you do have injuries, you, you've got to find, as a coordinator, it's your job to figure out how you can now craft the offense to now fit your new personnel, right? The new quarterback, new running backs, whatever it may be, you've got to get creative. And, and we saw some games where they did some cool, uh, you know, halfback slip screens, some tight end delay screens, and they got positive yardage. But ultimately, I just don't think there's enough creativeness on the offensive side of the ball to, to try to help this offense that was struggling because of injuries and struggling because of production. There just wasn't enough that went into it. Um, and, and we all thought maybe there might be some changes mid-year of getting yeah. rid of some, uh, you know, maybe putting tie up in the box and switching up there, maybe getting some assistant coaches, reassign the different positions and, and having, you know, certain guys, Harvey Young is on the staff, have him start helping out more with running backs to, to help that group. Um, but, man, like I said, I did not see – Ty getting the, the axe, and of course he's still on the staff as, as the the press release announced. We'll see what happens with the new offensive coordinator. Uh, he might stick around as a as a quarterbacks coach per se, um, or coach some other position. But but for now, BYU is out on the search looking for a new coordinator. It's it's tough, man, because we we've had so many discussions like this on on AFR and and countdown, which is and, and and Uncle B is always the first one to say it, right? Which which rightly rightly so. You have five quarterbacks. You've played with five quarterbacks this year. You know, what, what team is going to win and have success? And so I, I, I get that and understand it. But to, to your point, David, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's your job as the, as the offensive coordinator to put your guys in position to succeed. And, and I just remember, and I hate to go back to this, but 2010 when Bronco took over, one and four, right? We, we probably lost guys within those first five games because of injury. He took over and we started balling out. You know what I mean? And he found ways to put, you know, key players in key positions to, 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 to have success. And, and here's one more thing. I, I know we talked about it in the, in the uh, count out of kickoff in the postgame show. These fans, and I'm going to throw myself into the same mix, all we wanted was some hope going into this offseason. And, and, yes, BYU beats a really bad Hawaii team, and there, so there's a little bit of hope. 
But other than that, you know, there's a lot of question marks still surrounding this team. Who's going to be the starting quarterback next year? Who's going to emerge as the running back? Squallies has done well these last few games, but is Riley Burke going to be in the mix? And, you know, is Ula coming back? Is he going to be White a strong? wasn't Riley Burke in the mix? Right. The I mean, there, right. there's a plethora of, of questions. And, uh, you know, I guess this provides a little bit of hope for, for BYU fans that it's gonna, there's going to be a complete, you know, change, um, a kind of a big mix up. And, and we'll see who comes in and steps up to the plate as coordinator. I, who knows? There, there's a lot. I mean, because you're no coordinator, you don't have to be an active LDS. You don't have to be an LDS member of the church. Yeah, to be whereas the head coach, you do. Correct. And so, really, that opens up the, the, the entire picture to anybody to <laughs> yeah. come in and, and, and take this position. And, I mean, it could, be, it could really be uh, anybody in this, in this country. The question is, can BYU pay them? Can, can they pay a quality coordinator to come in? Um, you know, we'll see. Let's talk about some of the guys in the mix for this. And, and it is early, but some of the names being thrown into the mix. Uh, let's go over this. Uh, or way too early list. Dennis Simmons, former BYU linebacker, is the wide receivers coach at Oklahoma. Okay, interesting one there. Bob Stitt, former Montana head coach, has been thrown in the mix. Snow College head coach Paul Peterson, uh, Daryl Bevel is uh, you know at the top of the list. <laughs> an, an LDS guy, Seahawks OC. Hey, uh, could that, BYU pay him enough? That'd I don't be know. an early Christmas right there. His I daughter, <laughs> his daughter is going to play softball for BYU. By the way, oh, so little nugget there. So we got a chance. Norm Chow, do you bring him back? Norm Chow was in the football offices this last week. Aaron Roderick is the easiest, yeah, simplest choice. Uh, a guy who's been around BYU a little bit uh, this season. A guy who was with Kalani Sitake at Utah on that coaching staff. A yeah. former BYU wide receiver. He'd be one of the leading candidates, I would think, uh, in yeah. this situation. So there could be others, of course, on this list. But who BYU gets as the new offensive coordinator will certainly make a more interesting offseason because there's a new early signing day, uh, days, December 20th through 22nd. So BYU's getting a jump yeah. on this. It is Monday. So, so props to Kalani in that. Pro, you know, Kalani today, the first day back in the office after Hawaii, he, he makes the call because I think he understands the importance of, of getting rid of, of the, the coordinator position and trying to go out and actively find one now. And we, we saw this with the news with Florida yesterday hiring Dan Mullen and, and Tennessee going after their coaches, Chip Kelly to UCLA. I mean, teams are making moves, and now's the time to make your move. You don't, you don't want to be trying to make a move at the end of December when all the good coaches are taken, yeah. right? And so you, early you start, well, about, early jump about on it. Too, right? I mean, Same thing. I mean, if, 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 I, if, if Ty Demmer recruited me or – you know anybody on this offensive coaching staff recruited me? I'm I, I'm gonna be nervous. You know what I mean? Because and and yeah, maybe do I still have my scholarship? Maybe Kalani calls me up and I and I and, and comforts me and lets me know, hey, you can still come here. But I don't know these guys. You know what I mean? I, you they don't have, know the scheme. I don't know the scheme. Yeah. I don't. I you know they like Ty and, and those guys. They know my mom. They they've been in my you know my house. They sat on my living room, my couch. I don't know these guys, and so. That, you know, that's another, I think, a good opportunity is if you can get somebody in here fast and then they can go on tour, you know what I mean, city to city or recruit to recruit, calling people up and say, hey, you know what, this is, I'm the new OC, um, still want to have you, this is what we're going to do. You know, do you, do you want to come join the train? Do you want to yeah. come ride? Listen, I, when, when Kalani first was hired and he brought in a first-time offensive coordinator, a first-time defensive coordinator, there are a lot of people that were worried, including myself, because, it, you know, experience is huge in the college game. Yeah. Um, and so now that that experiment didn't work as far as Ty, now you got to go after somebody I think that has a lot of experience. I think a guy like Norm Chow that has, has been to a lot of programs, has experienced a lot of different type of offenses. I mean, you got to remember Coach and I. When Coach and I left to go to Arizona, and he came back and he brought that go fast, go hard, because he learned that from Rich Rodriguez yeah. there, there at Arizona. And he right? had been successful here, yeah. but BYU was done with him yep, they after the change. 20 season because it was mediocre. I want to point out that BYU did tolerate mediocre offense last season, but this season it took a dip, and that was with an NFL backfield. How many yeah. times has BYU had an NFL quarterback and running back on a 53-man roster the next season? It's been rare, and maybe it's never happened. But if you missed it, Ty Detmer relieved as the offensive coordinator this morning by head coach Kalani Satake. Uh, here with Brian Logan and David Nixon breaking it down uh, here on Facebook Live, a special BYU Sports Nation with the news here. So let's talk about what you guys were hinting at, the philosophy, the scheme. BYU has been trying to be a pro-style, run-heavy, ball-dominant, time-of-possession offense in an effort to be unique. When BYU was good uh, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, particularly on offense, they were unique. They were chucking the ball down the field. Now BYU wanted to be Stanford light. Does BYU still go down that route? I, I would imagine that maybe they don't 
because it didn't work. Yeah, but at the same time, you've been recruiting to this type of offense for the last few years. So now you're starting to get the personnel that fits his pro-style offense. And so are you going to go back to a spread? Now you got to go back and recruit all new kids for a spread? I mean, this it, is what happens in politics when we vote for a Democrat and Republican. <laughs> this is, this is the, the best analogy. Cross like over there. there. It's crossover, man. Yeah, that's, that's the question. Can BYU as an independent trying to stay in this landscape uh, with an ESPN contract, what kind of offense do they need? What kind of offense do they need? Do they need to be like everybody else where BYU's had a harder time recruiting speed, whereas BYU can re- recruit certain body types? Offensive linemen, tight ends, linebackers have always been a body type that BYU can recruit. So where does BYU go with this scheme? I mean, Because the guy is going to fit the scheme. So t- to me, I mean, it, it, it would make more sense. And, and, and we got to get some more you know, details and breakdown from, from Uncle B. Um, but talking to him about it, he's saying it, it makes sense to, to go the pro style as far as recruiting. You can always recruit those body types, right? Big offensive linemen, you're not going to have an issue. My concern is... Not so much as with the running backs. I think you can always have a Harvey. You can always get, you know, a once in a blue moon Jamal. And with college football, you need multiple running backs. So it doesn't matter just to you know, have one guy, year. right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm saying multiple studs, right? My, my concern is, and, and I go back to just Michigan, where if I'm just stacking everybody, um, and you look at Mississippi State, right? I'm stacking everybody in the box because I know you're going to run it. And... I'm going to press my corners, man up, safety over the top. Heck, I might even put a safety over the top. I might bring, bring both safeties down and, and have man on tight end and man, man on the running back, and then these are one-on-one guys. Can, can BYU recruit the receivers that they need to get off of press coverage and have the speed to get downfield and make those plays. Well, it goes back to the point. You can't. I don't think you can go back to a spread. I mean, you look at – we're not Oregon. BYU will never have that type of speed. Um, you know, and, and so you, you can't go that route. I think I think a, a hybrid. You look at what BYU's been able to do hybrid, in the past. Like a um, you know, with with Taysom. I mean, but the problem is you don't have a Taysom. See, you don't, that, you that, don't have a Taysom. Never had a Taysom. That's, that's, that's the only one they've ever had. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. you know, we, they tried it with they tried Riley Nelson. Look at though. Riley. Look at Riley. We, we talked about this. What uh, I think when uh, when Bo Hodge started his first game against Wisconsin, right? And I said, it's clear to me, guys, that BYU needs to have a running quarterback, a dual threat quarterback, to make up for just the, the, the athleticism in other places and other areas, to have that dual threat. And I started thinking about Riley. I started thinking about Taysom and then Bo, obviously. And then uh, Jaron Hall, who is on a mission, who's a dual threat uh, kind of guy, yet BYU's highest profile desired recruit is a pro-style quarterback. Well, and we talked about it. I think this team, we've noticed that probably the quarterback of the future may or may not be on this team right now. Right. And I think that's, that's a great question. That, that's we don't where, know who the number one is. That, that, and that's where you maybe go a J.C. route, and that's where the hope comes from is you bring in a new – you bring in a new offensive coordinator that all of a sudden does want to go, say, more of a spread with a dual threat yeah. quarterback, and he goes out and gets a JC quarterback. You know, look, Cam Newton came from a JC, Blend Junior College, yep. right up the road from where I grew up. But uh, listen, you, you've, it'll be interesting to see who they bring in, and, and I hope that they can make the hire here pretty soon because of what we've already talked about. You, you've got to get to recruits, you've got to get what your identity established, and really the, the current players, you got to get some some sense of uh, assurance that. Hey, everything's gonna be all right. Um, you know, we're, we're gonna be changing positions per se, mm-hmm. and, and and you guys are all auditioning for a new position, for maybe. But uh, man, it's this is uh, this is this, I, I didn't think it would come this soon, but like I said, props to Kalani. I think it, I think this is now when it needs to happen. Shows how serious he is it, to get it yeah. to get a head start. It also shows that I think he was he, he's been thinking about this for a while. This yeah. isn't this isn't something that all of a sudden popped in his mind yesterday. He wasn't on the flight home Saturday night. Debating thinking, oh, maybe this is something it's I should time. do. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because this because this is an offense that put up thirty points. You know, they put up thirty points against Hawaii. Um, not great, obviously, but they still were productive in that last game. The running the running game was was great. You know, you run for two hundred eighty five yards. He's not. The, but the damage had been done. It's, we've uh, we've said it for a few weeks. Uh, I, I made the analogy. There's a huge crater. You can't pile dirt on it and tell me how not deep it is. I saw how deep it was, <laughs> and it was bad. And BYU makes a change. Who will BYU hire is the question of the next couple of weeks. I feel like BYU needs to get someone in place uh, in the next two or three weeks before this early signing period of December 20th to 22nd. Yeah. I, th- I think somebody Matthew. with experience and somebody outside the program that can bring in some fresh ideas, some fresh knowledge. I think that's the way you got to go. And uh, who, who who emerges that name? I think we'll start hearing some names here pretty soon. They're, they'll start leaking, and you'll 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 see guys flying in and get interviewed. Um, but I think just some fresh blood because 
right now that even those guys on the off, even the players on the offense are all questioning, you know, man, we, we were terrible, right? Yeah. And and this has a lot to do with the, the coordinator and the players. The players didn't play well either. I mean, there were a lot of drop balls. Quarterback play was, was mediocre at best. Um, so there, there's going to be a lot of movement going on in the next few weeks, and I'm, I'm interested to see kind of how it pans out. Let's talk about Ty Detmer's legacy. He's the Prince of Provo. He and Jim Fredette are the most, two most popular athletes that have ever walked through here. Danny Ainge, you know, and you can add others in there. The dude won the Heisman Trophy here. Um, it was a risk to come here and be the OC to damage his legacy. Um, he's, he's still the man. But to, to what point did this kind of affect how you think about Ty in the future? Hey, listen, I, I think he stays a Prince of Provo. I, I, I think you, anytime you have the Heisman Trophy Award, I mean, you can't, you can't ever go back and, and doubt what he did as a player. I mean, he, he was one of the most prolific quarterbacks in all-time history, right? Um, so I, I think his, his legacy still stays that way. Obviously, didn't work out as a coordinator. And there's a lot of people that try to go on and, and become coaches. It doesn't work out. They were a great player. They weren't a great coach. And, and I'd probably be one of those. I'm not saying I'd be a great coach, per se. But I'd be a great coach. Tom Homo himself had this at Cal. Yeah, he was not Tom's been through before. Cal. He's been a tremendous AD. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we, so, re we regard him as a player and an AD. I don't think it tarnishes his legacy at all. I mean, obviously, there will always be an asterisk next to it that he didn't, he didn't succeed as a, as a coordinator. Um, but uh, what he did as a player was, was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you can't. You somebody can't. like me that, that, you know, didn't grow up in the culture and even in, in the church uh, coming here so late 2009, right? Um, that's all I heard, you know, Ty Detmer. And uh, anytime Bronco would, would, would show us film or, you know, any type of his history, whatever, you always had Ty. And uh, he was always on a pedestal to us, and I think he will forever be. And I think the the fact that it's it was very short, you know, two years. I don't think people would care too much. Um, I almost think it would be worse if he, you know, uh, coached for maybe let's say four years and was top twenty five. Maybe went to a national championship and then called a bad play <laughs> and lost the championship. I think that would be worse. Daryl than... Bevel's legacy with the Seahawks. Yes, ton of good. He's known as the guy that because that called one... a pass and didn't hand it off to yep. Marshawn Lynch. I think that's and, when and, it and I bad. think on Ty there'll always be an asterisk next to his name as well as a coordinator because of the injuries, right? I mean that's something that everyone that's will be it. able to kind of go back on and say, listen, he had a tough year. He didn't. He had a tough break as far as injuries. Yeah. At the end of the day, can you? What can you? There's so much there, man. I think I think any coordinator in college football would say that guy had five quarterbacks, um, you know, under center. Done. Uh, I'm not saying nothing else. I don't need to look at why anything not keep else. Him? Obviously, there was you know some on that end, and this is Brandon Doman part two, by the way. The heir apparent, the guy you wanted, the former quarterback, the form pro style, yep. g -g -g pro style two times now and recently has not worked in its implementation here, and that OC has been let go. So we'll see who the next offensive coordinator is. If you missed it, uh, head coach Kalani Satake relieves Ty Detmer of his role as offensive coordinator. Detmer had been the OC the past two seasons. Will he stay on as quarterbacks coach? We will find out because the new offensive coordinator – when he's hired, we'll make decisions regarding the offensive staff. That'll do it for us. Much more coverage coming up uh, t uh, tomorrow on BYU Sports Nation, tomorrow night on After Further Review with these guys and Blaine Fowler and Dave McCann as well. Ty Detmer, relieved as offensive coordinator at BYU. The search is on for the new guy. That'll do it for us. Thanks for tuning in.